something paranormal. It's a very personal thing. But this journey of mine into the ancient lands of Britain, it began for me Well, I've always had the interest, but my specific, the kind of, that which might represent a quest of sorts to recapture some essence of the ancients. It is like a finger pointing away to the moon came from a strange occurrence, a curious vision, which came to me whilst I was in France, of all places. Hmm. You see, I bought this ruined old house in a village in the middle of France. Fool that I was! cantankerous young lady beguiled me <laughs> such is life behind this house there was this great rock the house was set in cut into this rock and there was this rock face behind the house and one night it was near the end I knew I had to leave the place because it wasn't working out. It had all gone terribly awry, as things sometimes do. And I walked out stone cold sober of the back of the house, and this rock face stood before me. And as one might, you might do yourself. In times of, in, when you're facing a true ordeal that seems to threaten your very existence. I, uh, well, I found this rock without thinking about it. It was kind of represented the heart of the land of that place for me. The house itself was of little importance, really. I wasn't even that keen on the actual house itself. But this rock was what had really drawn me to the place uh, when I bought it. And one night, this night of which I speak, I walked out the back and faced the rock and was having a sort of little conversation in my head with it since it represented the very root of the place about whether I was going to stay or go. And the moon, believe it or not, for it is true, I am not embellishing this story. I do swear God's honest truth. The moon was, I don't, I don't know if it was full or not, but it was a decent moon. And it was rising behind me, the house was behind me, and the, my, the moon was above the house, bright, shining down onto this rock face, over which there was a white lichen, which, if you have noticed, lichen can sort of glow, it has a certain phosphorescent luminescence in the moonlight. Well, as I looked at this white lichen, stone cold sober, it morphed and I noticed first a figure, if I remember rightly, a figure drawn in the lichen. And as I looked on, I noticed alongside it other figures and forms of animals. But as my eyes drew over the rock face, the entire rock for about two square meters became covered in the lichen forms, the lichen forming, something like cave painting, it was very reminiscent of cave paintings, a scene of wild people running 
amongst a herd of many different animals across the face of this rock, a fresco of running primeval people and animals. And it, my mind exploded as I looked upon this and I thought, what on earth am I seeing? Well, how have I never noticed this before? This is astonishing, obviously, as you would. And so I turned, as is the way of things these days, and thought I must get my phone and come out and take a picture of this so that I can show people the astonishing uh, scene I'm witnessing in this lichen. And of course, when I came out again, there was nothing there. It was just the abstract forms of lichen. Isn't that a strange thing? And curiously, it wasn't. And there was no, I wasn't there thinking, looking for gay paintings. I wasn't looking for anything. I wasn't, uh, it just unveiled itself before me. This strange portal into another reality. A great scene of the ancient world before my very eyes formed and then dissolved again. Yes. So that was in part why I set off upon my journey. And it was something which again made the rock which was already of great significance to me, all the more significant. For I had seen with my own eyes the imprint of the ancients upon its rugged face. What do you think of that? I don't know what to think about it. Did I have a mildly schizophrenic episode? What on earth was going on there? Hmm. What do you think? What do you think? Have you had a, have you yourself had anything like that happen to you? It's not something which happens in my daily life. I have had other curious things happen every now and again, very rarely. But it's one of those things you can't define what it is. What is it? What happened there? I don't know. Did I simply imagine it into being for some bizarre reason as I was sat there, stood there casually, just regarding the rock and thinking, smoking a cigarette as one does on one's own in the night time. <laughs> Isn't it strange? What the world throws at us sometimes. Yes. So there you go. There'll be more than meets the eye to this strange little man's adventure into the ancient stoneworks of old. <laughs> to get back to launch again and now spring has come I'd have let you come into my homeland I'm not actually a Yorkshireman born and bred well I'm bred but um, I was actually born in Wales <coughs> my old man had had a farm on the um, in North Wales near, near Bala place called um, near a uh, little place called Kerrigadudian but he took this farm a uh, tenancy on this farm in 1980 when I was one and a half and being as it looked like he needed a hand I came up here with him to help <laughs> um, yeah this is in Bransdale my father rents it off the National Trust He's actually, rather sadly, um, and strangely, we're the sort of oldest family now in the valley. 
He's a good lad, isn't he? <laughs> Um, yeah, so the Watsons have ended up being the old blood of Bransdale, which is very bizarre because we're incomers. Um, and most of the other old families have moved out. Looking um, the south down there, down the valley, looking down towards um, York in the far distance, about I don't know, 25 miles as the crow flies. Maybe York is in that direction. Over the hill to the north is Middlesbrough and Newcastle, and then over towards the west, the Yorkshire Dales. rich legacy of folklore here. I'm interested in these folkloric things, mostly because I wonder about them reflecting, um, reflecting sort of ancestral memories that have been derived from true, uh, from real things, such as, for example, are ah, some of these, uh, for example, we have the Hobbs, in the, around here in the moors, there is a hob of Hodgebeck, this beck running down here. There's a hob of Hodgebeck, which, and hobs. Um, a lot of the local farms around here and different landmarks, they have hob associated with them. And a hob is a little, um, they're said to be a little hairy fellow uh, with that, it's a Teutonic spirit, it's a guardian of the land. They would bring great good fortune to the farm. So in the night they would appear and work for the farmer. They'd work kind of miracles. And the farmer, in exchange for the hob's good graces, would leave out a bowl of cream um, in the night time, or sometimes it's saying there's a bowl, bowl of milk, but generally a bowl of uh, unskimmed milk, perhaps even with the cream on top. There's a few interesting things about the Hobbs. For example, if you, it's said that if you give them clothes, they'll be deeply insulted um, and uh, turn against you. They're also very secretive. You mustn't go seeking them. Um, you have to, yes, uh, respect their privacy and they work on their own back. I think you don't, you don't command them. You don't tell them what they're going to do. They'll just do work for you. Rumpelstiltskin is derived as far as I can see, it's the same. Uh, the ho it's the same hob, and it's a hob creature. They're also known as boggarts, um, and I think on the continent they're known as red caps. They've got lots of different names, but they're all basically the same, same character as with Rumpelstiltskin. Um, these strange little fellows that help, and yeah, consequently with them, I wonder if they, if it somehow relates to very early um, relations, diplomatic relations formed between pastoralists who were keeping cows and hunter-gatherer folk living out in the wilds who would probably have to be kept on side so they didn't just turn up and hunt your cows. If you were in a small settlement and they were in the hills surrounding you would, um, and the one thing a hunter-gatherer cannot get is milk. So I wonder if that's why often it's milk that turns up as the offering, because um, that's something a hunter-gatherer can't attain through hunting and gathering. Or at least, yeah, I think you'd have to, <laughs> it'd be quite hard, maybe you could milk a wild deer or something, but I can't imagine that really working. Well, Right out there, looks like we got that doe, needs a milking. It's like the caviar of the dairy world, um, extremely uh, high value niche product.
the Vikings landed when they first apparently so it's said that they landed on um, Flanborough Head which is uh, straight east about 20 miles east of us is Scarborough Whitby Whitby is on the top side of the moors and uh, that's where the Vikings landed and yeah interestingly I found out recently that the Romans actually didn't actually really come into these moors they uh, they gave it a wide berth I guess they took York and uh, decided not to bother here which I can quite understand I mean there's no subduing a Dalesman <laughs> to the north there's the valley of Bransdale which is quite a small valley but there's I don't know um, these days all the farms are being are being joined up into so one farmer will nowadays tends to farm two or three uh, farms to be able to make ends meet but um, yeah when I was allowed there was maybe ten farms up there I don't know something like that um, and this farm is a hill I've got some footage of it I'll put it on this is a little hill on its own sort of blocking the end of the valley um, that we're on here with the stream running on the east and west sides sort of bounding it so it's its own little little kind of territory this is actually a proper witching stone um, quite what the heck a witching stone is I don't know really but um, it's not it's not a gatepost, it doesn't seem to be. Um, I haven't actually looked at it in a long time. It's actually it's been cut relatively recently, but yeah, they say it is said to be a witching stone, which is curious. There is bog oak and jet in a field we're just coming down to here that my, my father was ploughing it or subsoiling it years and years and years ago. And a lot of jets kept getting pulled up and yeah, we found some, there were a couple of big uh, bog oak, chunks of bog oak in there. So it's fair to assume that this was um, forested in the not too far distant past. How old is bog oak? Something for you to Google. Because it's not fossilized, but it's on the way there. So what's that? 10 or 20,000 years? Who's the same? Google. <laughs> so this is the bottom fields. Another standing stone here. I made a film about on my channel as a strange when the back in the past when I was making strange mysterious films and here is a well presumably a very ancient well um, which my old man uncovered he discovered that when he was clearing up this bit of land um, maybe a sacred well it goes back to the dawn of time, who's to say? Is that the cry of the banshee? <laughs> Speaking of which, When I was making, um, you know that film I made in Ireland? Have you seen it? It's one of my best, I tell you. The um, Three Fingers, which I made in uh, about the Stone Row in Cork. Well, I had a curious thing occurred, which is perhaps nothing perhaps entirely mundane, and yet perhaps not. I have never really been able to make up my mind, and I never will be able to make up my mind. That is the nature of these things. Well, I was parked by an old ruined church. There is the 
picture of it. There is a um, where my van is parked at the end of that film. And a uh, curious fellow walked past. He was a bit of a wizard, a bit of a shaman. He was a lovely fellow. Anyway, he was telling me about the black dog in Irish folklore. There is many a black dog in uh, folklore, but he was telling me about um, um, the black dog in Irish folklore, Irish black dog. which black is, dog. was according to him, often seen as a sort of guardian of the fairy realm. A, uh, a guardian of things such as the ring forts um, and uh, megalithic sites which are seen as or were seen as um, something of a residence of the fae the fairy folk, the fair folk as they're known in Ireland now I went up to the stone row at dawn to shoot that film and I was just arrived and I was in a rush. It was a little bit late, I was 10 minutes late. The dawn was already breaking. And so I quickly, I'd just taken off my rucksack and put it on the ground and I sort of sensed, heard something close beside me. And I turned around and there, just uh, five yards away, was a big black dog. Black I, thought dog. It'd be, I thought it was black a big dog. black Labrador. And it was just staring at me with a fairly um, content smile on its face. And being as I was in a rush, I looked at it and I thought, damn it all, that there's, a, there's a dog walker up here and now they're going to be walking around the place and I'm not going to be able to get my filming in. And so I, I just looked at it and went back to getting my camera out and things, turned around uh, a few seconds later and the dog was nowhere to be seen. And neither did any dog walker appear. There was no sign of any dog walker. Now at the time, I thought nothing of it. But then as the day progressed, I remembered this conversation I'd had with that fellow. A very large with, black uh, dog, black dog. Seamus. And it started playing on my mind. I started thinking, hold on a minute. What's going on there? This black dog just popped up as I turned up. It looked quite approving, thankfully. But there we go. One of those curious things. Curious things. Was that the guardian of the stones? The guardian of the stones. <laughs> we will never know. Probably just a stray black dog on its own in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. Probably. Let's be reasonable. We can't go believing in folklore, can we? When you see this large shadow running around, black dog, black dog, black dog. Thank you very much to those folks who've subscribed to my channel and uh, who oh, said nice things about my uh, films. Um, I've opened a the Odyssey channel recently, a clone of my channel on Odyssey for those who prefer a uh, platform that kind of supports free speech. Um, you can join there and anybody wishing to support my my work, show the appreciation, can do so through Odyssey. There's a support function on that, which is, isn't available at my level on YouTube. Hi. That's it for now, folks. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that it was of some interest. A um, little tour around my homelands. Stay dangerous, folks. All the best. Cheerio. Bye. The, oh, now there's a thing. There's a black rabbit. That's a very rare thing on switch cameras. That's right.